So I just got done fishing a tournament this weekend and I jumped up in my boat and I realized that I have four different Texas rigs rigged up. I didn't even realize that I had rigged up all these different Texas rigs over the course of a day, but it just really made me think of how versatile this lure is. And not only that, but just how, no matter if you are a beginner in fishing or if you've been fishing your entire life, a Texas rig is a tool that is very valuable to all of us fishermen because you can fish it in deep water, you can fish it in shallow water, you can fish it in muddy water, you can fish it in clear water. So in this video, I just wanna go a little bit more in depth when it comes to fishing a Texas rig. It may be a little bit longer of a video, but I wanna talk all about Texas rigs. And I also am going to give a few beginner tips as well as some that uh, you may have never even heard of if you're an advanced fishermen. So let's go ahead and dive on in to Texas rigs. Now looking at the front deck of my boat right now, I have a Yamamoto Cinco that is rigged up weightless, but Texas style. I have another rod and reel that has a 3 8 ounce crawl on it, but the weight is not pegged. I also have another rod that has a half ounce Berkeley Pit Boss on it with a pegged weight. And then I have yet another rod that is an ounce and a half weight with braided line that is a punching rod. So as you can see, the Texas rig is just an extremely versatile lure that you can use in a number of different situations. There's no one perfect Texas rig out there or even one that you can use all over the place because the thing about a Texas rig is you really want to select your weight, your hook, your line, whether you peg that weight or not, all dependent on the situations that you're fishing. So that's what we're gonna kinda go over in this video. I wanna go over the weight, the hook, the bait that I use, and why. So let's go ahead and start with the weight. Now, the weight is probably one of the easier things when it comes to setting up your Texas rig because this is a very situational thing. A lot of times if I can get away with a lighter weight, I'm going to use a lighter weight. And then on the opposite end of things, sometimes I have to use a heavy weight. If I am flipping and punching heavy cover, sometimes I have to use an ounce, ounce and a half, even two ounce weight to get through that cover to where the fish are. Now, that's not the only reason though I'm going to pick out a certain weight size. The other thing that I look at a lot is actually the temperature of the water. What I have seen is that slower fall rates help you to get a lot more bites in cold water. So anytime I'm fishing in, in water that's maybe in the 40s or even in the 50s, I really try to get away with as light a weight as possible because I really believe it gets me more bites. Now on the flip side of things, Sometimes in the summer months, when you're dealing with really hot water, I will actually step up in weight sizes often to try to get a reaction strike from bass. So for example, a lot of times when I approach a wooden laydown, I'm gonna pick up a 3 8 ounce weight. That's kind of my general flipping and pitching Texas rig setup, a 3 8 ounce weight. But in the, in the springtime when it's really cold, I'm gonna step down to a quarter ounce weight again because it's colder water. But if I come up to that same lay down in the middle of summer, I might actually go up to a half ounce or even a three quarter ounce and try to get a reaction strike from that bass. So that's one big thing you really wanna think about when it comes to the weight is because uh, depending on what size weight you're fishing is going to dictate how fast that lure falls through the water. And sometimes the speed at which that bait falls will dictate how many bites that you get. So that's really, really big when it comes to the Texas rig. Now, the other big thing about Texas rigs is understanding when you should peg the weight and when you shouldn't peg the weight. And what I mean by pegging the weight is simply preventing that weight from moving up and down the line. If you peg the weight, it's not gonna move anywhere. If you don't peg it, then that sinker can move across that line very freely. So in my opinion, I try to fish without a pegged weight as much as possible. Again, this kind of is similar to what I talked about with fishing a lightweight. I feel that I get a lot more bites if I can fish without a pegged 
weight. If I can go up to a lay down and flip it with a three eighths ounce weight that's not pegged, I really feel like I get a lot more bites. Now, again, there's just certain situations where you absolutely have to peg that weight or else what happens is your plastic will get caught in the cover, your weight will go down and you're sitting there working a bait and, and your plastic is like above the water and your weight is just going up and down. You're not gonna catch any fish in that situation. So when it calls for it, I definitely peg it. You know, if I'm fishing matted vegetation or a lot of times if I'm fishing vegetation in general, I'm going to peg my weight. Another time that I peg the weight is if I fish that really sticky or bushy brush. A lot of times when I flip laydowns, I like those bigger hardwoods, but sometimes you're flipping more bushes that have like sticks on them. If you're fishing those little sticks, that's where your bait can get hung up on it. So pegging it in that situation is really critical to make sure that that plastic will fall through that cover to where the fish is. But if you can get away with not pegging it, try it because I do think you will get a lot less bites. Now, another thing when it comes to weight size that is really, really important to know is that the bigger weight that you use, the harder it can be to hook fish. And the reason is, is that if you're using a really big weight and you set the hook with pretty hard with that big weight, what it does is it will pop that mouth of that fish open. And sometimes if it pops it open for a split second and you have a really hard hook set, that hook will actually pass through that fish's mouth without you even hooking the fish. So something that I have learned, especially when you fish really big weights, is do not ever slack line fish on the hook set. And what I mean by slack line is when you drop slack in your line and then set the hook. When you're fishing those really big weights, what you more or less wanna do is simply pull back swiftly. You wanna make sure your line is tight to that fish and when you set the hook, it's more of a swift pull backwards. It's not a drop the, the rod and really set backwards. I know that I do that sometimes and it's overkill, but it's just the way that I've always done it. So I have to correct myself big time when I'm using those big weights on the hook set. Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about is the hooks that you use. Now, there is a number of different hooks that you can use on a Texas rig. You can use an EWG style hook. You can use a worm hook. You can use what they call a straight shank hook. There's a lot of different hooks. And not only that, there's a lot of different sizes, okay? Now, when it comes to size, I'm really gonna match the size of my hook with the size of the bait that I'm using. If I'm using a really big, you know, 10 inch worm, 12 inch worm, I might use a five, six, seven knot hook. If I'm using a really small worm or a really small soft plastic, I might use a three knot hook. The other thing when it comes to the hook is the thickness of the hook. You will get more bites on a lighter wire hook than a heavy wire hook because that light wire hook really allows the plastic to just kind of move more naturally in the water. The problem is a lot of times when we fish Texas rigs, we are fishing them in a lot of cover and we're fishing them with heavier tackle. So in that situation, you have to make sure that you have a hook that can withstand you really pulling a big fish out of heavy cover. So the big thing here is use the lightest wire hook that you can get away with. That is, that's something that might come a little bit with trial and error, but it's, it's something that I think is really important. There are times where you don't have to use that really big flipping hook. You can get away with a lot lighter wire hook. And when you do, you're going to get more bites. But again, it's a trial and error thing. Now, when it comes to the style of hook, like I talked about, you have an EWG, a worm hook, and a straight shank. Those are kind of the main ones that you have. Now, for me, I have used all of those hooks and I've had success with all of those hooks. I know professional anglers that use all of those hooks and they have success. So is there one that is better? I don't really think so. I think it's the one that you are most comfortable with. Now, with that being said, the EWG hook is the one that you just really wanna pay close attention to. And the reason being is that 
I have found that there are situations on the water where I will miss fish because I'm using an EWG style hook. And most of the time, this is all relating to if I am really casting a Texas rig. If I am using, for example, a big Texas rig worm, a 10 inch zoom old monster worm, one of my absolute favorite worms to use, I do not like to use an EWG style hook when I am really casting out that Texas rig. I don't know what it is. It probably has to do with the fact that the hook point is kind of even with the eye of that hook. And so therefore, sometimes I think it can slip through a fish's mouth without you hooking it, especially at a distance. When you are really close range fishing, I don't think it happens all the time. If you're flipping and pitching, I've used it in the EWG a lot in those situations and I have no problems with it. But at that long range, I have had some issues hooking with fish. So for me, I actually don't even use the EWG style hook anymore. All I really use is either a straight shank hook or that worm hook, that offset worm hook. And it really, again, it's gonna depend on what type of plastic that I'm using. If I'm using really small compact baits like beaver style baits or Berkeley pit boss style baits or small little crawl baits, that's when I use the straight shank. If I'm using a little bit longer plastics like uh, a Texas rig worm or maybe a lizard, a little bit longer baits, that's when I use that offset worm hook. Now, speaking of the baits, the soft plastics, this is probably the biggest question that I get across the board is, you know, what's your favorite soft plastic worm or what do you use on your Texas rig? And this is something that I see more and more and more of when I go fishing is that I truly believe that a lot of times if you are around fish, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Cause I have fished in so many situations over the years where I am fishing one specific Texas rig soft plastic that I truly believe is the best. And then somebody else gets in my boat and we fish in an area that has a lot of fish and we're both catching them even though he's throwing something completely different. This happened to me when I was fishing with my uncle down in Florida. I really thought that I was getting more bites because I was using a Missile Baits D-Bomb. And I really like this bait for a number of different reasons, but he got in my boat. Not only was he using a different soft plastic, but he was using a different weight size and he was still catching fish equally as much as I was. So I really think that this is one area I don't believe you should put a ton of focus on when it comes to your Texas rig fishing. The one thing that I do like to focus on is whether baits have a lot of action to them or don't have a lot of action to them. For example, let me pull up a couple here. This is one of my favorite flipping and pitching baits right here. This is uh, a Berkeley Pit Boss. As you can see, I got the lot, I have one more left. This is, this is one of my favorite baits because it's a very compact bait. And it's kind of, to me, it's kind of the best of both worlds because it, it's a very flat, small bait. I've caught a lot of bass in muddy water and clear water, but it does have some action to it. As this bait falls through the water, the, the tails of it will actually kick down kind of like a crawl. Okay, that, that kicking motion is going to give action to that bait. Now, if you have a Missile Baits D-Bomb, let me pull one of these out as well. This bait here, they look how similar these baits look. Almost the exact same, right? But this one does not have that kicking. Gosh, this thing smells really good. Um, this one does not have a kicking motion to it at all. When you pitch it in there, it more or less just glides straight to the bottom. These tails don't kick where these tails do. That is the biggest separator when it comes to fishing a Texas rig is that there are days when bass like zero action and there are days where bass like a lot of action. You know, the, this happens across the board though. So for another example is here's two of my favorite big Texas rig worms. And I, when I say favorite, like these are the two that I use most of the time out there on the water and even the, my favorite color, right? So here we have both Zoom products. This is a Zoom Magnum Trick Worm, and this is a Zoom Old Monster Worm. Two of my favorite baits, Texas rigs to fish, really offshore in deep grass, deep rock, deep brush piles. But as you can see, 
these two baits have differences to them. This one, very straight, slender, no real action to this bait out there in the water. But this one over here, as you can see, it has this curly tail to it. As that is falling through the water or even moving across the bottom, it has more action to it. And like I said, you might think, oh, I wanna use a bait that has a lot of action, but there are days where the least amount of action that you have in your bait, the more bites you're going to get. Now, you might say, well, when do I know when to pick a bait that has action versus a bait that doesn't? And really, this is gonna come down to experimentation, but there are a few things that I do recognize out there on the water that I think do help. One is, again, referencing water temperature. When I'm in colder water temps, I like the baits that don't have a lot of action. When I'm in warmer water temps, I like the baits that have a lot more action, a lot more flap. If I'm fishing in really clear water situations, I like baits that don't have a lot of action. If I'm fishing in really muddy water, I like baits that have a lot of action, right? That muddy water, you want a little bit of vibration to kind of really push or help bass to kind of hone in on your bait. Now, again, another place that I found is when you are fishing around highly pressured bass. If you are fishing around highly pressured bass, baits that have little action to them and not just worms, you know, like this bait here, this is again, the missile baits, D bomb that has more of a gliding action, a lot of pressure on your body of water. You don't want that much action. If you don't have a lot of pressure on the body of water, Pretty much you can probably throw anything out there, but the ones that have a lot of action, it seems like the bass really, really love. Now, the last thing that I kind of want to talk about when it comes to a Texas rig is also to do with the plastics and that is color. This is by far something that I think we spend way too much time on. For me, I have probably two or three colors that I fish 90% of the time when I'm fishing a Texas rig. One of them is going to be a black and blue, like this one right here, this Missile Baits D-Bomb. This is what I'm gonna use when I'm fishing in muddy water situations or really dark situations, or if I'm fishing in tannic colored water, like you see a lot in Florida. This is like a tea colored water. Those darker baits are going to silhouette a little bit better, allowing the bass to see them, a little bit better. Now on the flip side, anytime I'm fishing in really clear water, I like the little bit more natural colors. As you can see, this is kind of that green pumpkin color. It has a little bit of green glitter in it as well, but green pumpkin, more natural colors. Watermelon is another really good one. Those are the ones that you want to stick to in really clean, clear water. Now, the, the only other color that I throw a lot is one that I actually held up a few times here, and this is plum. As you can see, this plum color is kind of like a reddish to it. And I don't know what it is, but I have seen this color outperform a lot of other colors out there on the water. And I, I can't put a finger on as to why. I really don't know why it is. It's just maybe there's something about it. Bass can see reds and greens really well in the water. As you can see, this is a little bit uh, more of a red uh, hint to it. So maybe they can just see it a little bit better. I don't know, but those are the main colors that I use. You have a, a green pumpkin, natural color, a black and blue. I use this plum. The only other color that I will use is white, okay? And I am only gonna use the white when I'm trying to mimic shad. So if you're using a Texas rig around a shad spawn, white can be hard to beat. We actually just saw Alton Jones Jr. win a big tournament flipping and pitching a Texas rigged white bait. Now, the very last thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to fishing a Texas rig is the equipment that you use to fish a Texas rig. Now. The thing with the Texas rig is this is going to be all over the place, okay? Because I have used a Texas rig on a spinning outfit like this. This is what I used to use all the time growing up uh, fishing in ponds. I would fish little quarter and sixteenth ounce Texas rig worms with this rig here. And then I kind of just step up my rod and reel depending on how big a weight that I'm using. For example, this rod right here, it's a seven foot three inch medium heavy power fast action rod. I have 
15 pound fluorocarbon line in a 3 8 ounce Texas rig on this. Uh, this is a rod and reel combo that I use a lot with Texas rigs, but it doesn't stop there. Here is another combo right here. This is actually a seven foot 11 inch heavy power rod that has a fast action and we have an ounce and a half of weight here. So you really just kind of want to match the rod and reel that you're using with the Texas rig that you're using. Now, with that being said, I know that not everyone can have three, four, five different rods to fish a Texas rig with. So if you need just one all around good Texas rig, I'm gonna suggest a rod and reel like this. This is the Bruin ELS reel. I would say go with a 7.3 to one or an 8.1 to one gear ratio reel, and then go with a rod that is just like this one. This is an Arc Essence rod. I also like the Arc Tharp series Moneymaker rod. They are both seven foot, three inch, medium heavy rods that are kind of a fast, action and you can use anything from 12 pound fluorocarbon to 20 pound fluorocarbon or even braid with those rods it's a great all around rod and reel combo to use so i hope you guys enjoyed this video all about texas rigs if you did don't forget to hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys in the next video